Good morning on this Mother's Day. We're so glad that you're here. Whether you're a member of this church or whether you just kind of stumbled across this on the internet, we're just so glad you're here. Thank you for being with us. And it's my hope that this worship service will be exactly what it is that you need this morning. Thank you for being with us. This is a reading from the Gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day, Mommy! We love you! Happy Mother's Day! 
Well, good morning and happy Mother's Day. It is an honor. I tell you what, it's just an honor. Every Mother's Day for me to be able to have a, a moment to just kind of reflect on my experiences with my mom. And I have two mothers, and the mother that I know the best is my stepmother. Um, and uh, I love the chance every year at Mother's Day to be able to just kind of think about the influence that she had on my life because I really kind of believe that uh, my relationship with my mom was something that was just kind of a God-given thing to me. It was such a gift. And let me tell you why. Because she kind of reflected God to me. She reflected God's love. Um, every time Christians talk about the way that God loves the world, I, I think of my mom. And here's an example. I was the youngest of six kids. <clears throat> I was the youngest of six kids. And um, that's a pretty good position to be in, if I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I, I had a pretty good life. A lot of things. For instance, by the time my parents got to me, they had done this five times. So not only were they exhausted, but they were a lot better at it. So I think I probably could say I, I probably got the best of my parents. And um, you know what? I also didn't kind of get put into the chore rotation. And more importantly, I was a real whiner. And I mean a big time whiner because it worked. Like, you know, if I just make it a little difficult, the older brothers or sisters would get the job or whatever. And I could I could just kind of get away with just about anything. So I, this is not a secret. I mean, everyone in my family would agree, I mean, that that was the case. I was a whiner, uh, big time. So I remember one time talking to my mom after I had become a parent. And I was kind of talking to her about things like discovering, you know, the realities of birth order and trying to be a good parent, just the kind of things that you talk about once you realize, oh, your heart, your job was hard, mom. And I said to her, you know, mom, I know I was just such a whiner. I can't imagine how you must have dealt with that because maybe my kids were starting to whine or something like that. And she looked at me and she said, oh, Nathan, you weren't a whiner. I don't remember you being a whiner. <laughs> and you know what I remember? Look, it's like, come on, mom. I mean, this is... Everybody knows I'm a whiner. I know I'm a whiner. I did it purposefully. Like I was a whiner. It's okay. But she just refused to accept that. She she read, she said, you were not a whiner, Nate. She said, you know what? You were the youngest of six kids. So you had to work a little harder to have your voice heard. And she started talking like that. And what I realized is, it's not like she was pretending that it what might not have been kind of my voice was loud because I had to be heard over. See, she wasn't going to lie about it, but she wasn't interested in what I had been. She wasn't interested in whether or not I had been this or that or the other thing. All my mom was ever interested in was what I was becoming. And in order to concentrate on what I was becoming, she just kind of didn't bother with the past, except to kind of learn lessons from it. And that to me feels an awful lot like the concept of forgiveness. Like, I will remember your sins no more because it's not about what you were. It's not about kind of trying to determine what you may have been. My mom was really only interested in what was coming for me and for her and for all of her kids and quite frankly, for the whole world. And I, I see God in that. You know, I mean, I kind of get the idea that as Christians, we, we think of God as terms of parent, like our father in heaven. And, you know, as Jesus said, oh, I wish that I were like a mother hen that I could, you know, gather you under my wing. That that kind of parental instinct is so beautiful. It's all about the forgiveness of sins and it's all about giving a new future. And that's exactly what Christianity is to me. And my mother gave that to me. And so as I think about this notion of Jesus preparing a place for his disciples so that where I'm at, you know, you'll be there too. I, I see the parent. You know, and I see the mother and the father that just wants to think about what we're becoming and is okay with not concentrating on what has been. I learned that from my mom. And I tell you what, she gave me all the Christianity, you know, that I ever needed so that I know what it means when Jesus says, I'm going ahead of you to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. It's Jesus not looking at my past. It's God not looking at my past. It's God inviting me not to look at my past, but to consider only what I'm becoming. And that's not bad. You know, happy Mother's Day.
At this time, I invite you to participate with us in the service of communion. The Bible, interestingly enough, doesn't really actually prescribe what communion services look like. Originally, they were done in homes, meals, right, around a, a table with families gathered together, that sort of thing. Um, and now here we are in this crisis. That doesn't mean we can't have communion. It just means it's a little bit different. So for those of you that would like to share in this time of communion, I'd invite you to, at any time in this video, press pause and go find yourself something like bread that you can use for the communion. And Jesus called for wine. You know, that's what he had at the Last Supper. Oftentimes people in churches will use grape juice if that's more appropriate for your family. And if you don't have those things, listen, it's strange times. Just find whatever you think will work for you. So as we gather together to take communion, join with me. And on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Today is Mother's Day, and we want to acknowledge all the women we're blessed to know. We rejoice over you for your strength, your wisdom, your strong love, and your beautiful faith. Whether today is a celebration for you or a day of quiet reflection and healing, we're thinking of all of you. If you gave birth this year to your first child, our joy overflows and we celebrate with you. If you adopted a child this year or became a foster parent, we rejoice with you and we want to honor you in your commitment to changing the lives of children. If you continue to struggle with infertility, we are hoping with you and holding your hand in prayer. If you are exhausted and feeling underappreciated for all you do for a house full of kids, we applaud you, we love you, and we appreciate you more than you can ever imagine. And if you lost a child this year to death or miscarriage, we weep and mourn with you. And if your child is lost to addiction or to the world, we hurt with you and we join you in putting our hope in the one who brings prodigals home. If you live with painful memories of your mom, we pray that you will find in a spiritual mother all that you never had from a birth mom. And if you're one of those amazing spiritual moms, we thank you for stepping up and being there when others couldn't. If you're experiencing an empty nest for the first time this year, we walk with you in this new season and are excited about the next chapter God has planned for you. If you're single, we celebrate your strength, beauty, and individuality and join with you in praying for the desires of your heart. If you're a single mom and wonder if you have the physical energy and financial resources to raise and provide for your child or children, we want to help you, and we will. And if you're pregnant for the first time, we prayerfully anticipate with you the joyful birth of a healthy child. And to all the special women on this Mother's Day, rest and delight in knowing that we are thankful for you and we celebrate 
each and every one of you.